Hi, I'm George and this is Virtual Staging. Today I'm showing you how you can remove this tripod from your 360 degrees panoramic images. And without further ado, let's crack on. So right now on my screen, as you can see, I have an image which was sent by Andreas, one of the subscribers on my channel. And his question was, how can he remove this thing, which is a tripod, from this image and replace the bathroom tiles. So today I'm showing you how you can remove with the technical virtual staging this tripod with the entire bathroom floor and replace basically we are going to retile the entire floor and we are going probably we are going to add a few bits and pieces there. So let's crack on go and back inside 3ds Max. As you can see I've already built the entire scene and this is the scene, I've used the exact same approach uh, like in all my uh, videos and especially the video on the screen right now. So if you haven't watched it, go and watch it and, and you will know more what I'm doing and why I'm doing in this video because this is not step by step tutorial and it's for, it's for more advanced users of virtual staging. So briefly, as you can see, I've already built everything and I've started and I've retail the entire floor and now uh, and now I'm going to show you what what is my scene and how I made it so I'm going to unhide the, this plane and hide this entire plane along with the sink and the tiles go back in my camera and as you can see I have the entire scene clean so this means if I render that right now I'm going to see nothing basically it will be only the virtual staging only the image which I've started working with so as you can see it is second we can see the the tripod at the bottom of the image so I'm not going to use the typical Photoshop or affinity or any post-production um, tricks where people erase the bottom because we have pretty much at the same time is complex and it's not because there are tiles and if you have to um, clone and stamp all of those tiles it will take a lot of time and it will be way more slowly than if I if we do what I'm going to show you right now in a second so right now I'm going to start with deleting the bathroom floor I've already built the entire polygon as you can see and I've even inserted the radiator as an object, as you can see right there. So I'm going to re remove the bathroom floor. Basically, I'm detaching this from my polygon. And I'm going to select the floor again. And there is a, a plugin called Floor Generator. This plugin comes the, uh, does not come with 3ds Max. You can find it online. There, there is going to be a link down below in the comments. And I've I have already another plugin which is linked to the previous plugin. <laughs> I know it's it's kind kind of complicated, but trust me on this, it's very easy. If you don't have this floor generator tools, uh, I'm going to type uh, simply floor generator and bam, 3ds Max just exploded, guys and now I'm sure my entire scene will crash. So I'll be back just in a second, well, as soon as I restart 3ds Max. Five minutes later. So I'm back again in my 3ds Max and I'm back at the previous level. Um, I'm going to start again by hiding and hiding and basically I'll do what I just said. This is exactly the same scene. And you will find out why I have a toilet um, outside of my room and just in a second so i'm going to detach this uh floor here again all the polygons i'm detaching this i'm using shortcuts so i will center my gizmo and i will check and i suppose this crashed because the floor generator uh wants to have all the times very uh, like a planar polygons if you don't have planar polygons it will crash every every time so for this sake I'm going to use my floor generator as you can see it works now fine uh, and I'm going to use quickly my camera to enter this and to see basically 
uh, what I have as floor. I want to match the tiles and I suppose it's more or less 12.5 by 12.5. Um, one tip guys, uh, every time when you make uh, 3D rooms and uh, you're supposed to have the real measurements because as you can see right now I had, I had to guess what is the dimensions of the tiles. It is advisable at the time of taking the photos, if you if you, if you, if you, if you are the one who are taking the photos, just make sure to measure them. If you're not the one who are taking the photos, ask the photographer to take the measurements of the certain objects like towels, walls, a bathtub or something, because you need those measurements in order to build accurately, accurately this, the space. So I've already tried and I know this is uh, 12.5 and I'm going to type the bevel. Let me know, by the way, down in the comments if you want to see a tutorial how I work with the floor generator so I can create an entire video on base uh, only separate video for the floor generator in use because this is not a tutorial where I'm going to dive deep in the floor generator. If you don't know um, how to use it or if you don't want to use it, you can build the geometry just from uh, polygons. It will be fine, but it will take you more time and I like to save time, so hence uh, this is why I'm using this thing. So um, right now I'm going to where is my yeah and I yeah yeah yeah, yeah okay. Uh, I need to offset this uh, to match more or less the tiles on the floor. And okay, job done. Now I'm going to open my material browser and I have already few setups of materials basically absolutely simple material but the trick here is i've already picked the the right color it's like um <laughs> uh, it, it wasn't really easy to to pick the color of the of these tiles because there's so many variables and additionally i had to um color correct this panorama because it wasn't it, it was very dark and it was it and additionally the horizon was not um, perfectly straight the verticals were not perfectly straight so i had to do some additional work to that and i already did it so i'm going to apply this i've selected my floor object and i'm going to assign this material and as soon as i press start and i will see my floor tiles appearing there as you can see voila I know it is super cool, but wait for it. There are a couple of additional uh, steps which we can use to create the, the floor. And as you can see, it takes a little bit more time because it's it's a huge image. It's like 6K image. And we see now the <laughs> toilet is protruding through the tiles. So what we can create in this case is we can create additional plane or a couple of more planes and hide those things. So for this for this um, purpose, I'm going to select again this bottom plane, which was used for the tiles. And as you can see, there are already tiles in it. Um, actually, where are my tiles? Okay, they are here. And I'm going to use this uh, bottom plane, as I said, for those tiles, uh, but not the floor generator one, but just a pure one. And this is it. Okay, that's my object. One second. Uh, it takes time to select the, the correct. Um, yeah, this is the piece. Actually, those are two pieces. Oh, that's very strange. Right. Mm, what do I have here? Yeah, this is the correct one. So I'm going to add additional black material, which will be the grout. As you can see inside this, let me open my affinity. The, the grout is black. So I'm going to replicate this by adding, uh, the, assigning this material to additional plane, which sits between the tiles. So yes, and now I'll select my floor generator and I'll extrude probably up to two centimeters, the entire floor object. And I'll go back inside my camera and I'll press render. And now, as you can see, you will be able to see the grout and the tiles reflecting everything around. And it's not there yet, but it is more convincing. And it, how much? It took me like three minutes to do the floor, an additional 15 minutes to build the entire scene. So keep in mind that uh, those kind of jobs 
they have to be better paid because it takes additional skills it, it takes more time and it just you know it's it's additional work so because i really appreciate your time guys what i'll do is i will quickly jump into my already built scene uh, now i've showed you how i did the flooring and I'll, I'll quickly erase this because i don't need it now but and i will basically unhide my already created scene it's exactly the same i've used exactly the same approach to build everything the side tiles and uh, the bath the bathtub tiles and I, as soon as i press render you will see how i have everything matching well it's not absolutely matching if you spend additional time to create the exact material so if you capture the the texture when you're on a si on site make sure to spend some time uh, getting textures uh, basically this means you have to plan in advance what you're going to create so if you're creating for example uh, if you're replacing if you know that you have to replace this tripod for example and you have to um, basically retile the entire floor you have to take the the capture more or less the the texture of this tile so if, if that's not possible at least somehow you have to made it possible you have to otherwise it will look far off very off right now it's not the absolute convincing but i think it does the job it's, it looks perfect here is a trick i did it addition i did additional uh, i built additional polygon here which was actually there there were splines just to hide the the floor otherwise if i don't have them let me show you what happens so basically my tiles they like appears on top of the sink which is inaccurate hence i i did additional spline which then i just add, added the uh, shadow catcher material and now it appears it is all fine let me go back and open and get it back in my scene as you can see it sits right there when it should be um let me go inside my camera well, this is uh, one of the uh, sometimes in 3ds max there, there's a bug uh, if you, you you have to go in inside the, the the viewport number four, which is this one at the right uh, uh, bottom, the, the the bottom right one, and you have to go inside then to select the camera in order to pick that camera in, in order to select it like in uh, rotate it. So as you can see, this is my spline. It's covering the sink. It's more or less of the same height. I know it's protruding, but that's not really a problem. So uh, additionally, the other thing is I had uh, I found this model online. Uh, this sink uh, sorry this toilet and I've basically what I did it I ungrouped the entire thing and I just used that back the um, basically front of the seat the toilet seat and the bottom part of the seat then I cut and let me use the mesh smooth on top of it because otherwise uh, it looks like really uh, strange so I've used then slice modifier which I inverted uh, vertically and then I removed the back side of it and I achieved exactly this what, what I just showed you over there then I created with the spline one line just to simulate the holes behind the toilet otherwise um, if I don't have it let me well, why why this is today I mean three uh, max is <laughs> this is not my day um, as you can see I more or less situated uh, this hose exactly where it is otherwise it will look underneath the tiles let me let me show you how it looks if i uh, uh, unhide this I mean, basically i enabled in render and now i won't be able to see my object and hence you cannot really see it as you can see the tiles they look on top basically on top of the hose which is an inaccurate so i'm going to enable it and as you see it is above them i know um Guys, if you have any comments and if you like so far what you see, leave a like in this video or let me know down in the comments if you have any comments or if you want to see anything like more than this. Um, additionally, what I did to this is I have applied absolutely the same material on this toilet seat. Uh, so my towels and the toilet seats, they have the absolutely, absolutely the same floor material. Something else which additionally I can do is to create this additional light so I already built one and as soon as I turn it on 
as you can see everything shines basically it's way better now and i have a strange looking reflection and i can turn it off and my tiles will be better looking basically you can play additionally with those uh, lights um to to create to remove those excessive shadows sometimes if you don't play with the excessive shadows or if you don't if you really don't know how to remove them just add additional lights and use them with low intensity like 15 5 maybe 1 or something or sometimes even 0 0.5 it does the job here is another trick so as soon as i had my tiles done uh, pay attention in this area here I had to re uh, basically to reduce the shadow amount. It was five, and that's five. And the shadow amount of five, as you can see, the newly created 3D object in conjunction with the 2D uh, flat polygon, which has a shadow capture material, creates really dark shadows. And this is something which I don't want to see in this scene. It is fine here on top of the 3D object, but it's not really okay on top of this shadow capture material. So I'm going to remove this. Uh, sorry reduce this to one and voila now it's like more or less on average uh, the, the, the shadow itself so I, I like it it's it's really nice it's, it's really well looking and what else what else guys let me know down in the comments if you want me to add additional mirror to this in another quick very quick tutorial and I will do it simply I think this bathroom can benefit uh, of um, from uh, additional mirror here, maybe a lamp here, maybe in next tutorial I will add water here in this bathtub and I can animate this water. Let me know in the, know in the comment if you want to see this and I hope this tutorial was very useful for this for you guys and yeah leave a like and share it with your friends. See you next time guys. Ciao!